We are live. Hello, everyone. Papa Hoss and Mama Hoss in the house. And we're going to be talking about some gardening things tonight. And everybody's talking about the cold snap coming along. Everybody's concerned about the cold snap. And I know our friends up north are poking a little fun at us because, you know, when we get down into 20 degrees, we start panicking down here. And they, they're used to it all the time. But they're calling for where we live. Friday and Saturday morning. At the moment, this could change. They're calling for 22 degrees Friday morning and 22 degrees Saturday morning for low. That causes major issues for us down here because we're not prepared for it. We haven't had that cold of weather in a couple of years. Well, probably about 10 years. No, we got down in a few years ago. We got down in the low 20s. Now, we've not been in the teens um, in a few years, but it could change. We could get down, you know, it's, they talking about today is Sunday night. We're talking about Friday. So things could change. But as of right now, two nights in a row, two nights row of 22 degrees. So, and maybe some snow. You know, we're all in panic mode down here and everybody's in panic mode about the gardens. I'll be honest with you. I even went to Tractor Supply Saturday and bought an antifreeze tester because we got to test all the antifreeze and all our tractors and vehicles and everything. And I knew they'd be sold out. So, we're all getting prepared for that. We'll start wrapping pipes uh, next week and checking out the freeze and getting everything prepared. We've already started moving some stuff in. Yeah. Well, I moved all my uh, flowers outside in little bunches. I'll cover them. Yeah, Adam's greenhouse is poking a little fun at us. Uh, well, so a little cool front for you all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you got to understand, we're just not prepared for it down here. So, ooh, 13 in Atlanta area. Ooh. Yeah, 13 could cause major issues for us. And to be honest with you, we have a bunch of ornamental plants down here. We have citrus trees. We have setsuma trees. And anything in the low teens would kill a lot of our uh, ornamental plants that would bust the bark on them, such mm. as pittus pearl, some of those that are... Um, we're subject to cold weather. All of our citrus trees, and we got a lot of citrus trees in our area here. They could see. Ooh, ooh. ooh. Lindsay Russia says we had a high of minus five today. Gotta love Minnesota. Ooh. Mm, that mm. makes my bones hurt. Yeah, me too. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, and before I forget it, we're gonna be doing a giveaway, y'all. After a while, everybody can see this right here. It's a new product we got coming out for 2023. Uh, yeah. So it's got 40. This is one of those Mylar bags that we put most of our seeds in that seals up right here. And seeds when here will last for a long time because it doesn't let moisture in or out. So it seals up. This is a survival seed collection with 40 varieties of open pollinated seeds in there. And what that means is you can save the seed on all these varieties in here and replant and they'll come back true to variety. And we'll have this on our website after the first of the year. Yep. But somebody tonight will get this. Yep. 40 seed packs in there. So that's kind of cool. We'll be doing a giveaway at the moment. And one more thing before I forget about it. Every order this month, in the month of December, we're going to get this card with this nice pen. Now, I know you guys can't tell how nice I've pen it in, but that's an enamel pen right there. And it's got these two things in the back so you can put it on your hat anywhere. I put one on my box, baseball hats that I wear. I got some on those, but uh, you can put these pins on pretty much anything. Nice, nice pins. Really turned out great. And on the card, you have a bloop. You didn't see that, did you? There's a bark, bark over there that you can scan. And I got my finger over it where you can't cheat, but you can get a special offer there. So there you have it. Make sure I get that over here. Isn't that weird how you move to the right? You move is, opposite. I'm going to do it one more time. Bloop. Yep. So you get that in the uh, the month of December. Month of December, and we may have something going on later in the year similar to that again. I don't know. We just may have. We're trying to do some exciting things for 2023, as far as you know. There's little cards that we put in Maybe, every order. Yeah, change up the stickers a little bit. Change up the stickers a little bit. We got some new products that's really exciting. It's going to be going in there, and we take a hit on those small orders because some of this stuff costs more. 
that if you order one pack of seed, but we're doing it anyway on all orders. We're putting uh, putting that in there. Anyway, back to getting cold. Show them what's going to get killed tonight. Oh, yeah. Mm, there. Y'all believe we still got tomatoes and sunflowers in the garden? Tomatoes and sunflowers in the garden. Tonight. Tonight. It will be the last night. It will be the last night. We got a bunch of sunflowers. Turn that around. Isn't that pretty? And these were all volunteer sunflowers. Yep. Isn't that gorgeous, gorgeous? I had to pick them today before they got zapped tonight. Yep. Will Cole get those calendula? Uh, if it gets down into the low 20s, probably. Mm. Well, you, I, my guess is you're going to be okay. There's a lot of factors that comes into play. You can't just talk about temperature because that's the only thing, that's the most important thing we look at. But how long does it stay cold? Excuse me. Is there any wind involved? All those kind of things plays a factor in how much damage you're going to get. But I would say on cleanser, if we get down into 25 or so, mm. like she's going to be gone. I've been harvesting them and put them in my dehydrator. Mm -hmm. Update on my freeze dryer. <sighs> So she got her harvest dry, harvest right, harvest right, freeze dryer in earlier in the Monday. week, and she was not prepared <laughs> for everything she needed to be. She had this spot she thought picked out that she wanted to put it. I was so concerned about the height of it and having enough room that I did not take in consideration. Well, actually, the bottom would have worked, but the drain is on the other side, and. I didn't take in consideration that I needed more ventilation on one side. So, folks, in case any of you are thinking about ordering one, that you got the one that's the medium, medium, medium that you don't have to have a special plug-in for, which that was a, a big thing for us because we didn't want to have to hire an electrician to run a new line because we're putting this thing in our laundry room. But this thing has vents down at the bottom, and you have to have a you have to leave it open on both sides. It has to have room so it can breathe and ventilate. And she didn't take that into consideration. So we had to order another table, a stainless steel restaurant table to come in that we're going to put it on. So we give it more room. So if you're thinking about ordering one of these things, you can't put it in a tight, tight spot. You have to put it out there so it has room. So I have been patiently waiting on the table. Yep. And it's supposed to be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So my dehydrator's been going full force all the time. <sighs> All I hear at night time is I picked the last of my Roselle because it'll be gone tonight. And I've been that calendula. And I had still had I had nice zinnia still blooming uh, today. Yeah. They'll tonight they'll be gone too. So but you know they bounced back out of that last cold spell. Well, I went in and um uh, did hit them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's get to some questions here. Tigerhead says, I had a couple of little bugs that look like ladybugs on the mustards today. Advice, uh, make sure they're ladybugs. I actually, about 30 minutes ago, I found a ladybug on something in the office. That there. sunflower. A sunflower that we pulled in, and I just went outside and threw them back outside. If it's ladybugs, fine. And you can Google whether uh, how to identify ladybugs. There's a lot of ladybugs in the garden. There's a lot of ladybugs in our garden. So I would I would encourage you, if they're ladybugs, leave them alone. Because they're eating aphids is what they're eating. Neil says it's supposed to be in the low teens. Will my carrots be okay? Yeah, Neil, I think they will. But if you want to cover them up, I don't think it would be a bad idea. That's getting down in the... Uh, that's getting in the iffy area right there with low teens. I think you'll be okay, and you may burn the top spot some, but I would probably cover them if I could. And when we talk about covering, a blanket, an old sheet, anything like that will help. Now, what you don't want to do is use plastic, and it touch the plant. So if you're going to put plastic out there, you need to use some kind of hoop to keep uh, air space in between the plant and the plastic. Otherwise, you want to use some type of fabric. And we just got... Uh, some fabric covers in some 1.5, which are pretty heavy duty fabric covers in that we got on the website. What Friday? Friday. They've been settling like crazy. That was good timing on our part getting them in. Anyway, you want a good fabric cover put on there. Now, what we do is with ours, we sell them with pins. The reason I wanted to do that because I've used these fabric covers in the past, and if you put them out there and you have any wind whatsoever, well, they're down there at the neighbor's house, it blows them off. So we're selling pins with ours, and these are sod pins so that you can pin them into the ground to kind of keep them 
you know, keep them put. And with these fabrics, if they touch the plant, it's okay to kind of insulate the plant. So when we've had cold spells before, we've had some customers that covered their stuff up, but when the sun came back out, they didn't uncover them. Well, the fabrics are not as important. You, you got more lead way with those because okay. they breathe a little bit. However, you still need to pull them back. You need to go pay attention. If it gets warm back up, go out there and take those covers off. But the great thing about the fabrics is you it's don't not, gonna, not like plastic. Not like plastic. Plastic is where you get into your problems with that because those plastics, even if you got them on hoops, it's like a okay. oven in there. When the sun comes out. Yep. Yep. Mm. Connie says, I tried to pre-order potato starts from y'all last week, but it would only let me get put on a list for when they come back in stock. Mm. Oh, Connie, my guess is, Connie, that you need to refresh your... Clear your cookies and your cash. Yep. Um, and if you're still having trouble, give us a call and we'll take yeah, it over Yeah, we'll take it over the phone. But we did have some customers having problems and they just had a an old... Um, it was loading an old page of the website where they were out of stock. Yeah, we have this problem all the time, and I'm not going to get really technical because I'm not that technical type person, but your computer actually will go back and see it. Save. A saved website sometimes. So to clear out that cache, it renews the website, and it kind of catches everything up to date. But you can always call us. we will be glad to hear you. They are selling fast, really fast. So. But we're not out of any. We're not out of any potatoes that I do. We did look at inventory levels last week. We do the way things are going. We're going to sell out pretty early. So, hey, Rick from Sydney, Australia. Hello. I guess y'all guys are in the summertime down there. Mm. Quite the opposite from us. Mm. Greg Bland, what's up, dude? So we have only been down to twenty-two twice so far here in Eastern North Carolina. Calling for fifteen a couple mornings this coming weekend, and maybe a few snow flurries. Christmas Eve, good deal. Row covers are ready for our onions and I'm assuming else will go. So, Greg, if you don't mind answering me, did you have any damage at uh, at 22? Because that's what they're calling for us. I was wondering, did you cover anything or did you have any damage at 22? How far south will the trick of putting your garlic in the refrigerator will work? Well, if you're talking about Elephant garlic, you don't have to do that. It doesn't require the stratification. Stratification, but soft neck garlic, they do recommend. I, you can do it anywhere. It doesn't matter how far south you are. You can do it all the way as far as Miami. But, but the soft neck requires a certain amount of cold, chill hours, which I think we're going to make it this winter. Mm -hmm. It looks like it. yeah. Stratification of garlic in the refrigerator. You can do that anywhere. How do you protect your garden from deer? Do you have any around? We get this question all yeah, the time. Yeah, we, we covered it uh, a couple of lives ago. What was some of the things? Some that, of it was lights and, yeah. and um, motion lights and ear, uh, sprinklers. Yeah, so the, the, the best consistent way of handling that is with these motion sensors out there that turns lights on and turns sprinklers on when they detect motion. One more, Mom. Thank you to whoever mentioned blinking solar lights oh, to scare okay. off a deer. Here we go. Has helped greatly. Not seeing coyote eyes in the woods since I put them up. My dogs are happier. Oh, yep. we might need to do that. Yep. We have coyotes around here that keeps Maggie up all night. And she keeps up us, us up all night. Yeah. Greg says, no da damage, thankfully. Where did he go? I just seen him on there and he got moved away. No damage, thankfully, didn't cover them. Cool. Yeah. That's interesting. That gives us hope. <laughs> yeah. So this is what we're going to do. This is our strategy. We're going to harvest, and we already did, anything that's about ready as far as broccoli, cauliflower, because, you know, those things can hold a week or two once they get ready. We're, we went ahead and harvested most of that. If you got any English peas, snow peas, anything like that, that's, you can go ahead and salvage a harvest. I would probably go ahead and do that. Even beets, if they're ready, yeah, I would go ahead and oh, pull yeah, those beets out. Um, Although mine's in this grow bag, so I might just sit, just up, move those. sit them under the porch. Uh, take your, your filter regulator combo off your irrigation system, your drip systems. Let me back up a minute. 
irrigate, make sure your plants have plenty of water with the cold spell coming in. You don't want your plants suffering from being dry. You want them to have plenty of moisture and they'll sustain the cold weather better. After you get plenty of moisture to these plants, take your filter regulator combo off, take your fertilizer injector if you've left it outside and move those inside. I would not fertilize till after the cold spell. If I was planning, if mine was due for fertilization, I'd probably hold skip off. Away. I would skip it till after this. With I don't think uh, pushing any new growth out here is going to do anybody any good. Our Row by Row show next week talks about the cold hardy plants mm -hmm. and what you should do. It's a yep. perfect time in there. Yep. Uh, things like onions. Uh, let's see what else. I wouldn't worry about regular garlic, elephant garlic, maybe. You could cover those. If it's going to get down into the teens, I would probably. Can you just cover them with mulch or you need to cover them with a cover? You could cover them with a cover. Any, if you got an old blanket, it would work fine. An old blanket would work good. A sheet would work okay. It's better than nothing. Of course, frost blanket's probably the best. Pine straw mm -hmm. or Bermuda grass or any kind of straw would do good. A, a wheat would work, but the problem with wheat is they have seeds in them. If you use wheat straw, man, you're going to have wheat coming up everywhere and cause you a lot of problems. So you want to use things like horse straw, excuse me, hay. horse hay, things like that. Pine straw works fine. Just put you a thin layer on top of it. You got to go and get this off now as soon as the cold weather is gone because it's going to cause some damage to your plants if you don't. But any of those things will work. What about strawberries? Oh, yeah. And they cover them strawberries, too. Yes. Strawberries. The cover mulching them. them would be fine. Mulching I think that's fine. what I'm going to yep. do is throw some hay over them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Serenity Mountain Farm says, I'm a new gardener, raised beds in ground and two high tunnels. I am going all in. My question is, four high tunnels. I am ready in high yield hybrids works best for max production. Oh, that's a good one, Serenity. It's according to what you're talking about. If you're talking about tomatoes, peppers, man, we could go, we could have a long conversation about that. Uh, what kind of tomatoes do you want to grow? Do you want to grow slicers? Do you want to grow Roma types? Definitely, I would go with some hybrids to increase my yield and to fight off some disease problems. One thing about high tunnels is sometimes you have a problem with air moving in there, and you can, you can have more disease problems with high tunnels because you don't get that circulation in there. So definitely would go with uh, with hybrids in there. As far as uh, do you want to go with indeterminates, determinants, just need more information there exactly what you're trying to grow there, and we could definitely help you out. You may want to shoot us an email. That's probably the best thing. Shoot us an email, list out what you want to grow, what you want to accomplish, and we give you some recommendations mm -hmm. on what to do there. The Tilly family farm. Will my lemon for tree be okay in 20? Mm. Is it now mine's in a container and I will cover mine up, but my sassuma tree that is huge, there's no way I could cover it up. Right. It, I guess it depends on the size. and It decides on the, the, the variety and how cold tolerant it is because they've made a lot of strides in the last few years with some of these cold tolerant citrus trees. I would try to protect it as much as I could, and if it's going to get down to 20, I would do what I could. If I could cover it, fine. If I couldn't, I'd just go out and say a little prayer. Over it. You need to do all you can because you get down in the dangers on there in 20. So if you can take precautions for it, by all means do What it. about these people that like water the trees and the ice forms on them? Is that sister trees? Yeah, they do that more for decorative type stuff. I, I don't think that's going to help a lot. It would help on the leaves. It would it would probably hold the leaves there. But the problem you get in with citrus trees and other things is the bark. If it gets down that cold, the bark on um, the trunk of the tree will split. And that's where you get your death from, uh, from that. Mm. The molecules in the expands and Bust, it splits. Yeah. You can see that. If you've ever seen that split from the bark, you know it. Mm. I have... Had great success with your Valerio carrots. I can't wait to grow them again. I grew those last year. Yep. This year I'm growing yellow bunch and, and ox heart. Ox heart and source of the K. Corona. Um and we got a video coming out next week about those carrots, I think. Yeah. 
Low 20s Wednesday through Saturday this week with snow. <laughs> Should I plant anything? Mm, I'll probably hold off. <laughs> yeah. So we had somebody here on the side. One more mom says that that YouTube guy said that it's easier as citrus gets older or they three years older, safer. Uh -huh. So the, this is what she says. The older the tree, and it makes sense. The older the tree, the more cold resistant it yeah, is. That's not like but with your plants. Yeah. The size of it matters. Thing. But even at 20 degrees, it's getting it's getting iffy there. When is best time to grow garlic in zone seven? Carl, I would say plant it in the fall and harvest it in the springtime would be my guess there. In zone six, they're gonna have a longer, it's gonna harvest longer up in the springtime. In zone seven, I'd say you'd be harvesting probably May. Plant in fall and harvest somewhere around in May. April, May. Yep. Anita, good to see you. Her and Stan from Huntsville, Alabama Zone said be loving my new wheel. Ho. Anita, what's going to be your cold for this weekend? What are y'all looking at up there in Huntsville? Huntsville is in northern Alabama. Mm. You know, Huntsville is where they have the the uh, uh, NASA program up there, something like that. Really? Yeah. I think so. Wow. Pulling out some. <laughs> Interesting facts yeah. there. How would you know that? I was close by one time. I was in Decatur. I had a meeting in Decatur, Alabama, uh, which is close by. Political redneck. Hello, I'm moving from Indiana to Alabama. Mm. You got any tips on growing in red clay? Yeah. Oh, man, that's going to be quite an adjustment for you. <laughs> and you're going to love Alabama. Uh, we we got a lot of good friends over there, and we just love Alabama. We're probably going to be making a, a trip over there later this year mm -hmm. in 2023. Talk about our giveaway again. And let me answer this question. Uh -huh. Add organic matter as much as you can to red clay, and don't get frustrated. Now, red clay is going to hold moisture more than our sandy soils. But one, one good thing about red clay is it takes less nutrients inputs because red clay – holds nutrients a lot better than our sandy type soils does. So you've got some of those things that's going to be different from what we do, but you got to work and get to understand the benefits of the red clay and be great and frustrating, but it's not going to take a lot of fertility because it does hold those nutrients so well they don't leach out. All right, back to our survival seed collection. I can't get this thing right. I know. I okay. okay. Okay, so this is what we're going to do, like guys. So the, 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 <laughs> <coughs> we have wrote down a number on this piece of paper. Right? Yeah. We're not showing you. I'm not going to show some paper. We've got a, a number inside there, and y'all can't see that number. There's a number between 1 and 100. Mm -hmm. And whoever picks that number between 1 and 100, the first person that, we, first see. Person that we see, and if so we got three people that picks that number, then we'll send three of them out. But we're, we're after the giveaway one here. So this is prize packages worth. Oh man, that's one hundred eighty something dollars, I believe. Worth it yeah. sells for ninety nine. Yeah, but it's a hundred values like uh, one hundred eighty bucks. Yeah. All right, between one and hundred, here it is. And we're gonna let it right there, and we will pick the winner. Oh, look at there! Boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh, yep. All right. So back to Susan Phelps. She said, "How will Brussels sprouts do with our low on Friday night at fifteen and high of thirty? With the like oh yeah, you'll be fine. One good thing about Brussels sprouts is they love the cold weather. You should be fine. I have them covered at the moment. I don't think you'll need to. Keep. Susan, I don't even think you need to cover them. If it makes you feel better, do it. But I don't think you're gonna need to cover them. They're gonna be fine. I didn't." I grew in Brussels sprouts this fall. I grew a bunch of them last year. I did too. And then they didn't, we've had one year where they did really well. Yeah, they test it's my just, patience. We it, love it is, them, but they yeah. just test my patience. How is the new project with irrigation and the weed protection tarp coming along? Oh, Neil, the lazy garden. That's the lazy garden. We finally came up with a name. We are, believe it or not, there is still some supply chain issues. I thought by now we would be through all this right here, but we're still seeing some issues. We've been having some of these irrigation stuff ordered for a month now, and 
the last word I got Friday was it's supposed to be here Monday. And then we'll have to take it all apart and put some of these kits together. So we should have the irrigation coming along. We're prob we got put out a month or so ago, excuse me, a month or so for the uh, tarps. We was expecting them in December. It looks like it's going to be February. So that's a little still be in time for spring garden, but uh, we was wanting before then. So we expect and everything in, we should have the uh, irrigation kits together first. And then as soon as the tarps get in, we'll have everything packaged and get them ready to go. We're doing some more gardening with some of them and showing some pictures what all you can do. Really excited about that project. Do you remove a weed berry mat at the end of the season? You can. If uh, you can or you can leave it alone. Now, one good thing about removing it is you can work those soils and you can add organic matter back in there and uh, and things like that. So that's a good thing you can do or you can leave it be. It doesn't matter. The good thing about these weed berry mats is you can do a lot of different things with them. You can leave it there for five years and still be fine. And this irrigation system that we're coming up with is not going to be a throwaway irrigation system. Like with our tape, with our drip tape, you know, these tapes and these main lines, we kind of view those as disposables so that you replace them after you work the soil and lay your garden back out. This irrigation system is going to come with the lazy garden. Simply just pull it back because everything stays the same as far as your spacing. You just pull it back when you get ready to do something different or you can lay it right back down to get it out of your way so you can plant or whatever. So the irrigation system and the, the uh, lazy garden mat is going to last at least five or six years. Mm. Well, we got a lot of numbers there, don't we? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say this, okay? I've already seen one winner. Yeah, that's we, the first winner. Yep, okay. We're announcing. Nope, not yet. <laughs> I don't. It's too early. We may have to end up giving away more than one. That was good information I just gave away. I shouldn't have gave that away. Really? Yeah. Okay. Facebook user. Congratulations on a great year row by row. I've learned so much about plants and gardening from your show. Stay warm next week. We're going to be cold. Merry Christmas to both of you. Well, Merry Christmas to you all as well. It's mm -hmm. been our pleasure. We enjoy doing this. Uh, it's our goal and our pleasure and our satisfaction to help people grow their own food. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. to enjoy. And the reason we do that is because we get so much joy out of gardening and growing things. And I guess we just want other people. We want to share. <laughs> we want other people to get the same experience we got. Yeah, it's kind of contagious. Yeah, you know, we like seeing people get excited and, you know, take our neighbor for instance. It's the first year she's grown. Ever, ever, ever. ever. Now, this lady is in her fifties. She's fifty. Five, Let's just say she's in her fifties. Okay? <laughs> she's in her fifties, but she has never grown anything before. Not even as a child. Mm -mm. And she got her some raised beds, and man, she is. She. I mean, when she job. sees, she plants the seed, and when she sees it germinate and sprout, she's just beside herself. And then when it bears fruit, like she's got some calendula now, and she's never grown flowers from seed. Now mm. she's planted some of our. Um, Zinnias transplants, but she just can't believe she can do it. Yeah, and the thrill she gets from cooking yeah. those potatoes or onions, they love, I, I believe onions is their favorite yeah, thing to grow. Yeah. But anyway, they, they get so much. So we love doing that for everybody. Yep. How cold will green magic broccoli take? Uh... Mm, I would say probably my guess is down to around 20. You should be okay. It's there again, it's cold. How but long? if you have mature. Oh, yeah. If you got mature heads, and go ahead and get those yeah. out. Those heads are a little mushy if it gets cold on. The plant may survive, but that broccoli, if it's in there, if it's yeah. mature enough to go ahead or and Or even if it's just early, you rather sacrifice it early than yep. to leave it on there. Same thing with cauliflower. Yep. Normally speaking, I'd say low 20s, you're going to be okay with broccoli. A peacemaker says, I'm headed to South Georgia the week after Christmas to visit my mom and brothers in Hay Hire in Lake Park. Mm, cool. You should come see us. Yep. We'll be very close to there. Yep. We got some good friends over there in Hay Hire and Lake Park as well. Is that where you help them with the community garden? No, that's in Ray City, which is close by. Yeah. New haircut for Sheila. No. I just got it up in a ponytail. 
<laughs> this headband thing here is driving he, me crazy. He, he hates my headband, y'all. I could deal with it if it was more earthy tone colors, but those colors are like, Rrr. I'm like, what's that? I dream of Jeannie? Yeah. What if she wiggles her nose? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Uh, I am thinking about getting a cut about this length. And she told me I had to start getting my eyebrows trimmed. <laughs> Yes, yeah. getting old, you start having hair growing out of all these places you didn't have before. You do. You got some. Wild... Never have I had my eyebrows trimmed in my life. Well, you need to. Yep. Yeah. They're getting a little. All right, let's there. move on. <laughs> Hello from Cairo, Georgia. James Cromer. What's up? We got some good friends down in Cairo down there too. And by the way, for New Year's, New Year's Eve, we will be spending our New Year's Eve on Lake Seminole. Yes. Yes, yep. we are taking a little siesta. Siesta before everything dusts loose. Yep. I hope it's not cold. Catch some of the speckle perch. Joy wants to know when should I plant sugar snap bees on 7B Alabama? Oh, Joy, I would say you've missed your fall planting time. I'd say wait till probably end of February. Uh, end of February, 1st of March. What's going to happen now if you plant them? And even if they do come up and we get one of these cold spells in. It's going to wipe them out. You, you can get by with planting in 7B. You can get by planting one in early fall. And probably if you had them not plants up, if we had a mild winter and you had plants up and mature, they might withstand the wintertime. But with these cold spells that we have them coming in later in the week, I think they would be wiped out. So wait till in February, first March planting, and you should be harvesting them in springtime. Mm. How about a Christmas gift to by uh, clicking the thumbs up, everyone? Greg and Sheila. Oh, I share Lou. Hey, share Lou. All right, so what do we want to do with the How do we do that? What? She said, hey, how about a Christmas gift? We do the thumbs up. Christmas gift to us there. Oh, 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 oh. I got confused there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean to give it. Spirit, I was going to give. Yeah, you going to give some. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Give us a thumbs up, y'all. If y'all give us a Christmas gift, okay? Yeah, I got you. Much appreciated. Yeah, Sherry. Uh, Carl wants to know: Is rabbit manure good for your garden? Yes, it's not the highest manure out there as far as. But you can use it immediately. You, you can use it immediately. Yeah, there's nothing wrong, and it feeds those microbes, earthworms, gets everything going. There's nothing wrong with rabbit manure. Will cover my cabbage protect it this week, or should I harvest early? So All right. So if you're going to get down in the teens, I would probably go ahead and harvest it. If you're going to be in the 20s, you can probably cover it and be okay. This is the weird thing about cabbage. Cabbage will actually split. The head will just split right up if it gets too cold. I'm, I'm thinking... 18 degrees is pretty much going to be the cutoff for your cabbage. It gets below 18, I think you're going to see some pretty dramatic damage. Above 18, if you protect it, I think you're probably going to be okay. I hope that helps. Mm, we've got some we need to harvest. Mm -hmm. We'll be okay in, in 22. So? Yeah. Mick says, please explain nightshades. Nightshades is a family of plants, and they all require... They all of them have the same disease problems, and most of them have the same insect problems. So you can Google nightshades and get a list of what all of them are. Tomatoes, peppers, uh, those kinds of things are in the nightshade family. You always want to rotate out of the nightshades. Morning glory is in the nightshade family. So mm -hmm. Google it, and you can get a whole big old list of what all is in the nightshade family. And you want to, you want to treat all those nightshades as the one single type plants so you want to rotate out of those or rotate in with them and you can normally speaking your diseases that is going to affect the common disease is going to affect all those which one you talking about? I like this one let's see if I don't mess something up someone asked um they didn't know we were going to be on tonight we typically just come on every other Sunday night yeah. Um, unless it's a holiday. And we we move the time around according to the time of year. Sometimes we do it at eight and in the summertime. At seven. Yeah. We do it at seven in the wintertime I because it's dark so early. Rocker mom, yeah. 
And we usually send out a Facebook post um, when we're going to be live. Yep. But we know everybody's busy like we are. And with yeah. the holidays coming up, we won't go live on New Year's Day. No, because we're going to be yeah. fishing. We're going to be fishing. Yeah, that's right. I don't yeah. think we'll, we'll no. be totally disconnected. Totally disconnected, yeah. All right. What about you want to do an update on the protege garden? Yeah, so we're having some uh it's starting to take it start the poje garden is starting to take shape. Oh man. We're gonna start painting on it in the morning. Little the little uh sitting area the <laughs> conversation area we got out there. <laughs> little little sitting area is gonna we're going to start painting on it in the morning. We got the shrubs printed. We got, got our living wall with the tea olives planted mm -hmm. last weekend. And we've decided to take down some of the pine trees that would uh, give yeah. a little too much shade. We originally was not going to take them down, but after we got sitting out there the other day. After we sat in, sat our, in the conversation garden. Yeah, had a moment there. We decided there was five pine trees that needed to go. So we, uh, we got Please some. note that I wanted those gone at the beginning. And you said no. Sometimes it has to be my idea. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and we had this big to do about how big it was going to be yeah. and where to. We had a major fight. No, we very seldom have major <laughs> fights. We had a major blow up on yeah, this. Yeah, our neighbors actually witnessed that one. Yeah. Didn't they? Yeah. Um, but I was right. Well, I actually, I actually confided in her this morning. I thought her, we did the right decision with Gordon with her plan. <laughs> I think my plan. We was, did the right decision. I think she was right yeah. in the end. Word for it. I was wanting to make it smaller, but I think it ended up being uh, being right. It's too cold to paint. Do you think it's going to be too cold to paint this week? It'll be all right tomorrow afternoon. It won't be in the morning, but we'll be tomorrow. And we got some more things to do first thing in the morning, but maybe mid morning would be yeah, mid morning. Yeah, yeah. Johnny, who painted my um, doors, is coming to paint the trim yeah will says merry christmas hey, to each and one each and everyone at house from dixie meadows farm well, merry christmas to you will hope you guys stay safe and warm up there in the great state of south carolina one more mom says i have a kiddo that wants to be a potato farmer <laughs> you know uh potatoes are fun mm -hmm. i think we we got a video out there we did with Couple of friends, Junior, yeah. couple of friends of ours, and, and those little girls had a ball plant potatoes and harvest them. Yeah, so potatoes. If you got one crop there that you should include small children with, it is potatoes. And you know the good thing about them is they can help you with potatoes because they're big. The you know, the, yeah, and they can't mess up a whole. Lot. So yeah. it's a great, great thing to include yeah. little ones on. So it was Carrie's nieces, and they yeah. helped you plant them. Then they came back. And helped you harvest them. Yep. We need to have them on again. Yeah. We'll be seeing them in the next few days, hopefully. Do you have any tips for growing watermelons in raised beds, foot tall raised beds? I planted the seedless watermelons and some seed ones. What was the pollinator this year? The one you used was uh, Charleston Gray. Charleston Gray, and then and it was some seedless watermelons, and they both did excellent. Um, you just need plenty of room for the vines to grow, or either make sure you go out there every day and kind of train them to stay in the bed. So Neil, I don't know where you're at, but you're if you're in a a, a shorter growing region than what we are, I would probably recommend going. We've got one called Black Tail Mountain. That's a good one for raised beds in northern areas. So if you have one of those shorter growing I seasons. That's the name. I don't think that's the right name. Check me out. I'm going to check you out. And, of course, with watermelons, you want to make sure they got plenty of calcium and boron and all those things. So if you are going to grow them, whether it's in raised beds or not, you want to use that product called MicroBoost that we got because it gives watermelons all those minor elements that they need to grow. She's looking at make sure I told y'all right. That name just don't sound kosher. 
Rocket Man says it will be in the low 40s or high 30s in Florida this weekend. Do I need to cover my broccoli, cauliflower, onions, beets, and lettuces? No. Oh, you were right. What? <laughs> what? You were right. What? What's it called? Black Tail Mountain Watermelon. Oh, oh. Yeah. Read the description on there. It's a good one. It's a medium sized watermelon there. Extremely well suited for northern zones, but can stand the higher temperatures and droughts. The lower zone, um, it's a round fruit, can weigh between eight to 14 pounds. That's what you have to, yeah. Uh, look if out I, for. my memory serves me right, it maybe don't vine as much as some of the other varieties. So, one more mom says he's going to be right a few more times. <laughs> Well, we let him be right, you know. Like, yeah, the running joke around here he is that everything's got to be my idea. So yeah. what I let them do is I let them throw ideas out, <laughs> and I just kind of ignore it. And I give it a few days, and I bring it back around, and I may move it. I may digest it and then bring it out in a little different way, and that way it becomes my idea. And it's a good idea if it's my idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could show Carrie's response to that. <laughs> the Garden and Gator. Let's see what he had to say there. I placed an order this week, and 18 minutes later, I got a message that this ship outstanding. Thank you. Looking forward to my whole spin. Cool, the Garden Gator. We appreciate Be you. Be sure baby. to scan that code that comes on that pen. Yeah, a special code. Because we got a little bit going on in the office here about those codes, see who, how many <laughs> people use those. <laughs> Hannah Rose. Let's see what Hannah, Hannah Rose. Hannah Rose. I hadn't seen her in a while. Do you guys carry the big rainbow tomato? It's hands down my favorite variety in Southwest Florida. Interesting. I've never heard of it, Hannah, but that's interesting. Uh, I will have to look that up. Never heard of big rainbow tomato. Side note here, mm -hmm. I am going to Orlando in January to the ASTA. ASTA is the biggest seed meeting in the United States. Yeah. And I'm going to be down there for three days meeting with all the seed breeders. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very interesting. Never have I attended one. It's either in San Diego every other year and it's in Orlando every other year. Mm -hmm. So I have the opportunity to attend this year. I've already got some meetings set up down there. So that's going to be really, really fun. Mm -hmm. You going by yourself? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I got my seed order the other day, including the free collars. My husband loved the Hall's hat pin and stuck it right on his hat. So she must have ordered through Cog Hills Link. Probably. Yeah. If you order through Cog Hills Link, you do get a free pack of seed. And it helps him out a little bit too. Mm -hmm. So, yep, cool. If you need that link, you just go to their webpage and you, you can find it under yep. affiliates. We're going to open this up. I'll tell you what, it's 743. At 745, we're going to open this number up, okay? Okay. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. Seed, soil, and sunshine says, hi, guys. I'm late. I am the seed addict that loves to buy seeds for you. Well, we sure appreciate you. We're seed addicts as well. Uh, we've got a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of seeds, so we love seeds as well. And I love, I was mentioning going to this meeting next week, I love talking to seed breeders about the unusual stuff. The unusual stuff I've never heard before. A lot of that tomato she mentioned there. That's extremely interesting that to me. Up. Yep. I get all excited. Now, I do get the opportunity to attend some trials during the year. Um, we are a member of the National Garden Bureau, and they put on the All American Selections. You may have seen this on some seed descriptions it's called the AAS. It's All American Selections. Mm -hmm. We are part of that group, and we get to attend those trials, and those are really, really nice. We get to see how some of these varieties do. Actually, I get to talk to some of the judges and see what their thoughts are on some of them. On how they pick the mm -hmm. winners? Yep. Interesting. And I always, every time I go, I get at least two or three varieties. It just blows me away. Okay. Carrie says we have one winner, just one winner. One winner. All right. So who is the winner? Okay. So it's 744. 39 was 39. Number. This way. 39 was the number and oops 
Janet Benson. Janet Benson, what you need to do, you are the lucky winner of the survival kit. So if you will send cusservicehostools.com, and that address is on the bottom of our website. So C U S T H O S S S E R V Cusserve at hostools.com, and we'll get you one of these sent out. Yeah, send us your shipping address. And anybody else that's interested in this, it'll be on the website <coughs> after the first of the year. Yep. Janet, good deal. Good guess. So we had a giveaway on that. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. That was cool. What else we got going on? Oh, no. Got Christmas coming up. Mm -hmm. I wrapped all my presents today. Yeah, all of our Christmas bought. Right. Well, so we're headed again on that. Now, I'll tell you something. And shipped. Let me just give a little. No, we did buy the babies some things. Don't get me wrong, the, the grandchildren. We, we don't buy, we quit years ago. Now, I'm going to give everybody this piece of information out there because you guys may, may help you. We quit a few years ago buying presents for the adults. So we don't buy any presents to exchange mm -hmm. for the adults. Actually, on my mother's side, on my side, we um, always just donate money and give to a needy family or person in the community and this year we picked somebody that's going through some health issues and taking chemo. And that's what we do. We always buy the kids something, but all the adults just pitch in and do that. And I, we find that more rewarding than we do, but I'm not telling y'all this to brag on ourselves for doing that. That's not the reason behind this. The reason behind we doing it is it helps somebody else, but it makes Christmas so much less stressful. stressful. What happens is when you go through this gift stage, we've done it before in the past where everybody buys all these gifts and you stress up to the last minute. Did you forget anybody? Did you buy anything? We don't go through any of that. And what we find on Christmas Day is we enjoy Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We find that we enjoy one another's company and the Christmas is so much less stressful in doing that than it is doing the gift thing. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would share. It. We've been doing it for a number of years now. Mm -hmm. And it, to me, I love it so much better. Mm -hmm. Of course, we get the grandbaby something. We got the grandbaby shipped to Ohio. Yeah. Yep. It's been a while since I've been on one of your lives. The flu kicked my rear end this year about as hard as that Georgia Florida game. <laughs> well, I'm glad um, you're doing better, Hannah Rose. Um, Captain Jerry is hi, Greg and Mama Hoss. It's Captain Jerry. Can I grow two types of? Bell peppers close together, and I'm looking for mercury cucumber seeds. Can I still get them from you? Thanks, Captain Jerry. Is mercury the one we were out of? Yeah, you can grow two different types of bell peppers close to one another. I don't think you have a problem there. I mean, they may be a small, small chance they might cross pollinate, but more likely that may be on the next generation as well. So I don't think you have a problem. I never worry about peppers cross pollinate. Mercury cucumber, I'm almost positive. We don't have it. We will have it. We're still getting a few seeds in. No, yeah. we have it. We have it in stock, yeah. And it's a parthicar. Yeah, mercury is a gynoecious part variety. So, yeah, it's a, mercury is, is one of those few that is gynoecious and it's a parth. What that means is you don't need pollinators for it. And it also has the majority of female flowers. So it's a very high producer. Now, the difference between gynoecious and monoecious is the gynoecious is going to put a heavier crop on up front. A monoecious is going to have more throughout the, it's going to have a, the, the season's going to be drawn out a little bit more. It's going to produce more over a period of time where the gynoecious are going to load up more so. That's probably more than you asked for, but I thought I'd give it to you. Just so. Well, just come out of it, just flow it out, yeah, busting out there, busting out. Yeah, let's do one more here. Kiss my grass acres. It's host tools when I start my cabbage inside. How long do I keep the grow lights on it for them? Oh, you're gonna need to keep your grow lights on there the whole time they're growing inside where they won't get leggy. Normally speaking, I can grow cabbage out from seed to transplant in four weeks. That's having everything pretty much right. Fertilizing when they need them, but cabbage grow out pretty good. And if I'm growing them inside, I would keep a grow light on them the entire time until I get ready to transplant them outside. Mm. Oh, 
All right, folks, we're getting to the end of the show. It's time for us to go down there and fix some supper. We didn't even have dinner yet. Have no, we got leftovers. We have collards Ooh. and cornbread. Yep. Go get me some cornbread and the collard juice. Yep. All right, folks, thank y'all for joining us. We're going to wrap it up. If we don't see each and one of y'all, Merry Christmas, okay? We are going to have a Robo Roast show come out Thursday night, but happy to miss y'all. We hope each and every one of y'all have a Merry Christmas and uh, looking forward to next year. Good night.